Hi everybody, this is Laura, City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I'm taking part in the Let's Get Organized Hop. The paper crafting YouTubers have a monthly hop in which we talk about organizing and this month we're talking about workstations. I would say that I have two different places in the house where I scrapbook. I scrapbook a lot in my scrapbooking room and I just made a video in which I took you through the entire room and nothing has really changed in my scrapbooking room. So I thought instead of showing you that space again, I would show you this space where I do a lot of scrapbooking as well. Now I did not have a scrapbooking room for a very long time. That's a rather recent development. I have spent years and years scrapbooking right here on my coffee table. Years ago, we used to have different couches and I used to have room to put boxes underneath the couches and everyone would have to lift up their feet in order for me to pull out some of my scrapbooking supplies. And this is much better. I have everything well organized in my scrapbooking room, but I still scrapbook here on my coffee table. And it's not that I don't use my scrapbooking room. Whenever I'm doing mixed media, I work down there and many other times too. But when my family is home, I like to be right here with my family. And my daughters are both in their 20s. They both still live at home. They're both going to school. But I know that I probably don't have too much time left where they'll be living at home. And so I want to make the most of all my time with them. And I also like to hang out with my husband. We have a TV right here and there are some couches surrounding the coffee table. So I'm able to watch TV and spend some time with them and also get some scrapbooking pages done. Like I said, I scrapbook on my coffee table. There's usually a mat that's right on the floor in front of the coffee table, but that's being washed right now. It's very comfortable for me. I know that for a lot of people that would not be super comfortable, but I've just gotten used to working that way. So that's how I like to work. I have a number of supplies in the drawers and I bring up anything else that I need. So here we go. I'm going to give you a tour of this workspace. I could call it my satellite scrapbooking workstation. So this coffee table is an old coffee table. It was one of the first pieces of furniture, if not the first piece of furniture that I bought when my husband and I got married. And it's a little worn, like I said, you could see some places on the wood where the stain has worn off, but I really like this piece of furniture, so I continue to use it. I don't have any plans to replace it. Maybe get it refinished, but not replace it. On top of the table, I have a piece of plastic. Years ago, we used to eat in a restaurant that had plastic on all of their tables, and they told us where they got it from, and so we got a piece to fit our coffee table, and it's great. I can use some paint and some inks and things like that and not have to worry that they're going to permanently stain the wood. I have these two lights. I got these on a great clearance sale at TJ Maxx. They are wonderful. I was having a lot of trouble with the lighting on my scrapbooking videos, but I think that these have made the lighting a lot better. I also have a Verilux light, and that is an excellent bright light, and I don't put it on when I'm filming because it will flood the video and there'll be too much light, but I do like to have it when I'm doing prep work. I also have this We Are Memory Keepers die cutting machine. It only has about a two and three quarter inch platform, so I can't cut really wide dies, but I am able to cut the majority of the die cuts that I want to create on this little machine. And then if I need to use the Big Shot or another die cutting machine, I can either bring it up or I can go downstairs and cut the die cuts there. I have most of the supplies in these two drawers. I have a <laughs> Fiskars cutting board underneath the coffee table and I usually keep it there, nobody minds. So it's just hidden under there. In this drawer, I have a lot of tools and some other supplies that I use on my scrapbooking layouts. Now for jewels and embellishments, I have a sampling of those here, sorry about the glare. I keep those in this bag and then as I use them up I will replenish them. I also like to use rulers. 
I have a T-square that I think is a very important tool to have handy. I also have this 18 inch metal ruler, especially when I'm using things on a diagonal. I like to have a very long ruler. And then I also have this 12 inch plastic ruler. Also in this drawer, I have some templates that you could use to make lines to journal on. I use those occasionally, not too much. I have some extra photos. I don't like to have extra photos hanging around. I like to keep those all organized in a different way. But for right now, I am keeping those handy right there. I have my Aileen's Gel Glue. That is my favorite glue that I'm using right now. Sometimes my favorite glue changes, but I've been using that for quite a while. Also, I have some inks. I have two boxes of Distress inks. I'm not a huge fan of these very small ink pads. I prefer to have the full-size ink pads, but I use these quite a bit. I distress the I'm sorry, I ink the edges of a lot of things with them, and these are the neutral colors. I use those the most, and then occasionally I will use some of these colors as well to ink edges. I keep a Distress Oxide in black soot up here because I use that often to ink edges, and also a Distress Ink in Vintage Photo. And then I keep some daubers over here to use with those inks. I have a black one, a brown one, and then I also have a green one because I use green quite a bit, but I don't keep those pads up here. I keep those downstairs where there's more room because there's lots of different colors of green. I also keep some washi tape that I know I'm not going to use on scrapbooking layouts handy in here. I use that to hold the dies onto the paper. As I die cut, I have some post-it notes in case I want to remember something, make a note to myself about something, or write something on a post-it note so I can label a scrapbooking project, all kinds of different things that come up. And then I have an eraser, and I have a little cheapy pencil sharpener in there. Behind that, I have some scotch tape. I have a dot runner. I also have this Tim Holtz distressing tool. I often use my scissors to distress edges, but I like having this as well. And then there's a date stamp uh, right here as well. Over here, I have some scissors. I have some different scissors. I have a large pair of scissors. I have the Cutter B scissors. I have these scissors. These are heavy duty scissors. I could use these for cutting things like wire and some other things that have come up. And then there's an inexpensive pair of blue scissors under there that I got from Tuesday morning. There's a glue stick. There are some loose pearls. The adhesive has come off of these, so I can still use them, but I like to keep them in a neat way or I won't end up using them. And then in here I have some pins and an embroidery needle. I also have my Creative Memories circle cutters. I have the cutters right here. I had two sets of the cutters because they came out with a new version. This was years and years ago, but I had the old version and the new version, and I think both of them are good. So I thought that since I use the circle cutters so often that it was worth investing in a second set of those so I don't have to keep running up and down the stairs, and I do use them a lot, and I think that was a good investment. Behind these items, I have some punches. I have a We Are Memory Keepers punch where you can cut out a little circle to go on your tags. I have this Fiskars scalloped border punch. It's kind of broken, and Fiskars is great about replacing things that are broken. When I contacted them, I told them, I think I just need one part. I forget what it was now. These little uh, metal pieces came out and I had a little bit of trouble getting them back in. I think there's something that's kind of cracked, but they just sent me a new one. They could have just sent me the parts, but I thought it was really nice. They sent me a brand new punch. So I have that one downstairs, and then I have this one up here, and it does need to be reassembled every now and then, but for the most part, I can still get it to work. I also have a We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder. I have another corner rounder downstairs that I use when I'm downstairs, and then I have this 
punch. Now this is a punch that I bought two of. I used to think that if you have a punch, you're set for life. It's a tool, it, it'll always be fine. But I have had some punches break and they've been some of my favorite punches. So I thought it would be a good idea to get another one of these punches. If you have happened to watch any of my scrapbooking process videos, you may know that I absolutely love this punch and I use it on most of my layouts. So I bought another one of those. And then this is a punch that I just use a lot and I just decided to keep this one upstairs. Over here, I have a whole bunch of pens and pencils and markers. And these are things that I use to journal on my layouts and a whole bunch of purposes for these. And I have some tools mixed in here. I have this tool. This comes in a pack of two from Dollar Tree. It's very useful for a lot of things. In particular, I use it to remove the die cuts from the dies. I also have this tool from We Are Memory Keepers. It has a sticky side, so you can use it to move sequins around. And then I have some dental tools. I bought some dental tools at a flea market. I know that sounds gross, but I boiled them for about an hour before I would use them. And for a while, it still felt a little funny using them, but now I'm really glad I have them. They are fantastic. They have different shapes and different pointiness on the end of each one. They're all a little different, and I find these really useful for a lot of purposes along the way. On the left-hand side, I put these in here because I thought I might use these. These are black markers. There are some Jane Davenport markers I got from Spellbinders. I haven't used those quite yet. And then here I have this little book, and I use this book to write things down, anything that I want to write down. Sometimes it's the name of a YouTube video that I want to make sure that I have in a permanent place in case I want to watch it again. It could be a product. It could be the name of a printer that somebody recommends. Anything that I want to make sure that I remember, I write in this little book because if I write it on a scrap of paper, I will lose it and I will not have that information anymore. So I find it best to just write it in this little book and then I know that I have it. In this drawer, I have some other items. I have an ATG gun. I use this constantly, so I have to keep that handy. On the right-hand side, I have a bunch of envelopes that have different things in them. This one has some foam that I use to create dimension on my pages. This one has some chipboard and some cardboard, and I use this also to create dimension and for some other things on my layouts as well. I have this bag in here. I have the plates to my We Are Memory Keepers little die cutting machine. And I also have some papers that I have cut to size in here. I'll see if I can open this with one hand. Oh, you could see through here. These are some papers that I have cut to size so that I can just start cutting. I don't have to cut paper. And I usually cut these from scraps of white paper that I have. And then I like to keep them handy. This is a toolbox. I just bought this at a crop. Somebody was getting rid of it for $3. This is one of the tool sets that I've been using for many, many years. I have an old set downstairs. It comes with this little mat. You can punch holes using this tool. I use this quite a bit. I can't get it out right now, but I, it has different attachments on it so you can punch holes of different sizes and use the hammer for that. There's also a set of tweezers in here and there's this little pokey tool and I use that quite a bit as well and so I was really happy to find this because they're kind of expensive. I don't know that I would have bought another one for upstairs if I hadn't seen it for such a great price but I do like having it and I have used it quite a few times. On the very bottom, I have some plastic mats. Years and years ago, we bought a Vitamix, which is a mixer for the kitchen, and I still use the Vitamix. It's still running really well, but we never use these mats for the purpose that they intended, so I use them a lot of times when I'm working on the coffee table just to give me a surface to work on.
In this folder, I have some labels, and these labels have really been very useful for me. So I wanted to show you the labels. So I print these on some Avery labels. I'll show you a cleaner sheet. So one of the things I was struggling with was keeping track of the photo date. This was really a problem for me for a little while. I kept scrapbooking, thinking I was gonna remember or that I would be able to find the date and then oftentimes I was not able to. So I made up these labels to put the important information that I need on and then I could just stick it to the back of the layout and then I would have all the information you know, in an ongoing way. So the photo date is the first thing that I write down before I even think about attaching the photo down to the layout. I circle Danielle or Julia depending on which album the layout is for or maybe it's a different project and then I'll just write it on the line. For the description, I will describe the photos and then on the second line, I'll write the paper collection and manufacture of that collection. The date that I scrapbooked the layout goes over here and then if it's for a challenge or a hop, I will write that on this line right here. And that's really helped me because I tend to forget a lot of this information very, very quickly. So these labels have been really helpful for me. I have another label that I use too. I also use these labels. These are very simple. It just says materials used. And then I can make a list of all the materials that I use for a layout. So whatever inks I use, whatever embellishments, anything that I use on the leg out, I will list them here. And then that really helps me with my YouTube channel. I can just upload the video and then I can type in all of the materials that I use. And I don't have to remember. So those are labels that I keep handy and I find they're accessible in that folder that I have right there. Underneath that, I have some pieces of plastic and I also use these to protect work surfaces. This is the piece of paper that goes on top of a silhouette mat. The mat got old, so I saved this paper. I see a lot of people using this actually. This is a great idea to put underneath any project that you're working on. If you're using inks or anything like that, it definitely helps to protect whatever you're working on. I have a couple of mats. This is a 12 by 12 inch close to my heart mat. This is great for just working on a layout. On the back, you may know that the backs of their mats are good for stamping, so I keep that handy. And then I have this Creative Memories self-healing mat. And you can see that I've also done quite a bit of inking on here, but for the most part, things seem to clean right off of it, so I like to keep that handy. And then down here, I have some paper. I'll just describe to you what I have. I have some 12 by 12 inch black paper, white paper. I have some papers that I know that I won't use. And I use those when I'm piecing together papers to make a layout. I might be putting two pieces of paper together. So I need a 12 by 12 piece of paper to attach them to. And I use those papers all the time. I like to keep those handy. And then on the bottom I have a whole bunch of white scraps of paper and I use those for different purposes on my layouts. I use all of these things on a regular basis. I also want to mention that over in the corner you can see that I have a stand and I use that stand to put my iPod on. I always film on my iPod and I use an iPod because I don't like using my phone. I find I often get phone calls and messages and things like that, and it interrupts with the filming. So I use an iPod that is not synced with iCloud or anything else, and then that's what I use for my filming. So that stand is perfect. I absolutely love it, and I use that all the time on my filming. So that is my workstation, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed this video please take a look in the description box. You will find links to the videos and the channels of all the other scrapbookers and other paper crafters who are participating in the hop this month. I hope that you have a fantastic day and I hope that I see you again next month. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.